Advent Reflection, Wednesday the 22nd of December. Joseph is a character in the story of the Nativity that, to be honest with you, I've never really spent a lot of time thinking about. In fact, the season of Christmas has always been one of my least favourites. The Easter story has always been the one that's meant more to me, that we journey with Christ in the darkest areas of our lives to finally meet the joy and hope that the resurrection holds. And it takes place in springtime, a time of the year when there's new life and more light. So here I am in the midst of my least favourite season, aware that I sound like an Ebenezer Scrooge, shouting bah humbug to all the blatant commercialism, gift giving and forced merriment that this season brings. I really could see it far enough. So it was with much trepidation and procrastination that I approached this reflection on Joseph. And where did that leave me? Well, it left me with contemplating the stories in Luke and Matthew's Gospels. Stories without a sleigh or a Santa in sight. And I spent time in prayer with these stories. Stories about a God who loved us so much that he became human in order to draw us closer to him and him closer to us. But it was during a time when people felt a lack of joy and merriment. It was a time of oppression and injustice. A young woman who would have had zero status and authority in that world was chosen by God to bear his child. I am aware of the role that Mary played in the story and as I get older, I'm also aware of how beautifully subversive the story is. Like, uh, for example, Elizabeth and Mary celebrating their motherhood by passionately discussing the overthrow of every earthly empire. I love that kind of thing. But my reflection was to focus on the silent figure of Joseph. So I looked again at Joseph. Joseph utters not one single word in the whole narrative. He says nothing. This role model at first did not appeal to me. After having been described as quiet for my entire life, I don't want to be quiet anymore. I want to speak out. However, it's never a coincidence when you're asked to reflect on Joseph. No, so I thought, right, okay, so silence it is then. What can I learn from Joseph, from his silence? The more I contemplated and the more I did research in Joseph, I realised that his silence spoke volumes. Joseph's example is so important because he's a man of action, not words. Words don't change the world, it's actions that do. Last night I watched the final of Strictly Come Dancing. And in that final, there was originally going to be three people, a black woman, a gay man, and a young deaf woman, all of whom in their lifetime would have experienced being silenced and marginalized. And yet, here they are on a Saturday night prime time show on BBC One, and their dancing spoke volumes to people. A theologian, um, her name is Tina Beatty, that I follow on social media, she said the following, Sometimes the world is changed more through the fragility of beauty, trust and honesty than through angry activism or the apathy of our times. Those dancers incarnated the vibrant energy of joy, triumphing over fear and self-doubt. And I thought, that's the way of Joseph. Words matter, yes but they mean nothing without action. The courageous action of a carpenter from Nazareth, a man who listened to God and followed God's will, enabled the Christ child to be born into our world. Beautiful, humble, silent, amazing Joseph. What an extraordinary example to follow. So my challenge this Christmas, is to be more Joseph, to discover as Joseph did, that God can be found in all places in the world, in the darkness of a stable and in the glittery world of a ballroom on a Saturday night. 
So as Joseph might say, keep dancing. <laughs>